gonna go up forward and get past this thicket. You can see them just there. Here's a little a little gap for us to have a look. Hello. I'm oh, sorry, we, the, the road angle changes constantly. So there's a few of them in here. It doesn't look like the big herd that we had though. But at least we've got some elephants, which is nice. Just very peacefully flapping her ears, munching away, eating grass. Oh, there's elephants. We've got elephants on either side of us now. That's good. So hopefully they'll stay in sight for quite some time. But we will have to put our infrared on at some point because we won't be able to continue viewing these elephants um, when it gets too dark. But look at her there. So she is eating grass. She's found a patch that she's enjoying. She's having to shake quite a bit of the soil off of the roots. So, so when elephants feed on grass, most of the time, they actually completely pull the whole plant out of the ground. Sometimes they get lucky when it's nice and green. It tends to break a bit easier because it's softer. Then the roots stay behind. But once the grass gets unpalatable like this, it becomes tougher and not as easy to digest as the greener grasses. And that's why they pull the roots out. So it's good to just give it a shake off because remember in elephants age is determined by their teeth so if they don't shake off of the unnecessary soil uh, they will grind down their teeth a lot quicker and that process speeds up anyways during the winter months so there's no need to add fuel to that fire keep those teeth nice and clean elephant and then you'll be able to keep them for a long time and we put all our jackets on because we got cold at one point. But the spot that we're sitting in is very sheltered. We can't feel any of the wind at all. And I'm actually quite hot now. I feel as though I need to take a few layers off. But I know once I start moving, I'm going to get chilly again. Ah, apparently it is 74 and 23. So not particularly cold. Like I was saying yesterday, the evenings don't get too bad. About 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, it's starting to get chilly. And then, of course, the wee hours of the morning, it's freezing cold. And when we start safari, the same thing. We always com complain about the cold weather. Oh, that's lovely. Look at that. Isn't that great that their ears are just large enough that when they do flap them forward, they can actually chase the insects around their eyes. And, and that's very, very useful because their tail can't reach there. Of course, they've got their trunks, which they can bring up and wipe their eyes with. And sometimes it's nice just to be able to use your, your ears. I wish I could do that. There's a lot of moisture coming off the eyes, so of course the insects will hang around in those areas. But not bothered at all by our presence. So relaxed. We will see if she decides to come this way. Now the little elephant just to the right, it's not the greatest view, but it's, it's been quite funny. It's trying to very delicately pick off leaves, but it's not doing the greatest job. It was struggling just now. Let's see, yes, you're chewing now. You've got some leaves. So... Unlike an adult elephant that will break the leaves off and put it straight into its mouth, it's obviously breaking bits that are too big. So it picks it and then puts it on the ground like it's doing now and then pulls the odd leaf off and then pops it in its mouth. Now you're going to eat grass? Yes. No, you're still eating a leaf. It's enjoying that bush willow. Whichever one of the 45 million bush willows we get in this area. Isn't it sweet? Yes, come back to mum. Also, not a very old elephant. Maybe about eight or nine months old. Actually, no. Maybe even a bit older than that. Maybe a year, year and a half. It's not actually that small now that it comes up to mum. Can't fit underneath mum's tummy anymore. You can see that. So even though it's trying to. You're not going to manage to go under there, little one. It looks like a little boy. It's just so great how they go up to mom and, and look for comfort, just as we, as humans do. You know, go over to get a, a cuddle, a hug. Little one's going over and probably tr going to want to try and have a suckle at some point too. It will still be suckling. They do, they suckle for ages, elephants. Right up until mom has her next calf, so f to about four years old. And then, even then, when mom's not looking, the older calves often will sneak in and try and get a little bit of milk, but she won't normally stand for that. Goodness gracious, she hasn't stopped, has she? she isn't, is she even still breathing as she 
shovels down all that grass. Hey girl, you're a really efficient eater. You're not wasting any time at all. So you see how she's feeding against these small shrubs. Now, a behavior again that we've seen and we have started chatting about it, but the grass underneath that shrub and underneath some of these fallen trees, she might still find some lovely green stuff that has been missed. So we'll start seeing them picking up uh, trees that have been fought or that have fallen over or they've pushed over they'll pick them up and move them so that they can reach the more palatable grasses because the ones that are out in the sun all day they get burnt and they go brown very very quickly and if you look carefully at her mammary gland this one on the right hand side you can actually see that little one was suckling at one point there's a little bit of saliva there stop pushing underneath mom you're too big to go underneath her Oh, are you going to try? Oh my goodness, it is. It's trying. <laughs> what are you doing? You can't figure out if it's trying to eat something that's underneath, underneath her feet. Maybe there's a little, oh no, you're getting grass. Maybe there's also a little root, not quite strong enough to pull up. Hehehe. <laughs> Now, Catherine, you've said that apparently baby elephants start to trumpet and sort of scream when their mom starts to wean them. Most certainly, she does do that. And you often find that you hear those noises coming from this, the, the oldest calf. Because like I said, they, when mom's not paying attention, they will try and sneak a suckle as well. And then mom realizes, hey, that's not the little one who's drinking. And, and then she'll, you know, turn away or a reprimand the younger one and normally that ends up in a tantrum but yes you are entirely correct in saying that that um, that does happen often and that's something how we find the elephants that's how i was finding the elephants in summer because we couldn't see anything you would just switch off you'd have their tracks and you'd wait till you heard a and that was me making that noise and you go right up that direction and then off you'd go to try and find them now it's probably one of the most intimidating sounds out in the bush, especially at night. And if you are, say, your guest and you're out just on your deck and before you go to bed and you hear a sound like that, you would think that there are dinosaurs lurking about. They make interesting noises. Isn't this a lovely, peaceful way to end a Thursday afternoon? It's not a bad way. Hello, girl. You're going to come up to the car. We'll see if she starts to show any interest in us. She hasn't showed us that she's bothered by us being here. We were parked quite a distance away from her. Now she's happily approaching us. She's feeding in this direction. But she has got plenty of space to pass. And if she wants to walk exactly where my car is, she'll tell me and I'll happily reverse or I'll go forward for her and give her the right of way. That's often what happens with elephants. I've noticed, um, especially when you're in the national parks or no, even just out here, is that elephants have very specific routes that they like to walk on and it's happened to me so I can I talk about it and I have told the story before where I was sitting in the car, I was, being, I was actually being naughty, it was when I was very little and I got shouted at, I wasn't listening to my dad and he just said oh whatever, I don't care anymore, then you must be killed by an elephant and and it serves me right, I was sitting on the door, we were at a dam and we checked around, there was nothing and I was just looking, it was quite a big dam and I was looking with my binoculars, like I said I was little, I don't do those types of things anymore because I know better now and I did get in trouble and this massive elephant bull came out of nowhere, we were all looking at crocodiles and hippos and he wanted to walk where our car was, we didn't hear him because remember when an elephant walks it's completely silent, anyways it stood next to the car probably a little bit closer to where this elephant is from us now and trumpeted and well I smacked my head so hard on the window coming as obviously jumped back in it was terrible and then that was the last time I ever did anything like that my dad laughed at me and said I told you not to do that so I suppose I, I learnt the hard way and all we had to do all my dad did was he just he actually didn't even have to turn the car and he just put the vehicle out of gear and rolled back and then the elephant was quite happy he walked straight past us and straight in front of us and that's what elephants will do so you don't always have to panic when elephants show you that they're unhappy with you sometimes it means you just have to move five or ten meters and then they'll go about their day and it's important that you don't react too quickly to an elephant when I say too quickly I meant too dramatically sorry I should have used that word so don't panic 
take a deep breath, assess the situation. They're not just going to attack you. They do give you warning signs. And if you are unsure, start the car and just slowly move away. But don't block an elephant. That is honestly the worst thing that you can do, is blocking an elephant. And don't play around with elephant bulls and must. If you see them, give them, give them way. Don't try and follow them. That's also a mistake that people, a lot of people make in national parks is trying to get the greatest sighting of a big elephant bull and think that he's just going to walk past the car. He might walk past the car. He probably will just walk past the car. But you don't want to take a chance because they're very temperamental when they're in that must period. So that's when uh, there's a lot of testosterone pumping through their body and they're ready to mate with the females and they basically are seeking out any cows and estrus and they don't let anything come in their way. And that's why you'll see with us as guides is that sometimes you find a bull and he's in must and he's not happy and we just go right you know what we can go find elephants somewhere else we'll go look for somebody who wants to be viewed now how great is this we've seen this elephant cow and the way she's eating she means business she's not wasting any time like i said she's being very efficient whereas that little calf who's not quite just depending on vegetation is being so slow and delicate look at it picking out a little piece of grass pulling it putting it in its mouth making sure it goes in the right way. It's still got a lot to learn, a lot of muscles to train though before it can eat as quickly as mum. Hello, Carsten, who's all the way from Denmark. Thank you for your question. Are you wondering if there's any nutritional value in this dead grass? Uh, not, not as much as uh, the elephants would like. It's really just roughage at the moment, probably the equivalent of eating hay or straw. So, so not doing them, um, not doing them too much, and that's why they start to feed towards the drainage lines to eat the greener vegetation. It's also softer, not so hard on their teeth, but they need to continuously eat 19 hours a day and make sure that they get 5% of their body weight. So even though the grass doesn't necessarily have as much nutrition as what they'd need, they'll feed on a variety of things throughout the entire day. So she could have been feeding on bush willows and all sorts of things. She's actually changed now. She's gone from grass and she's feeding on a variable bush willow. She's just stripping the leaves straight off of the no, now she's eating a bit of the stem, but a moment ago she was actually just pulling the leaves off like that. And that's the problem with, um, with obviously the harsh seasons, not getting any rain in the winter months, is that the grass is the first thing that disappears. And that's why the animal's diet is so varied depending on the season. So elephants prefer to feed on grass. It's their favorite thing to eat, and they will throughout the summer months. They'll eat all the lovely green grass. They'll eat all the new marula leaves and all the new green leaves that have come through. And then they wait. And then towards the end of the winter, sorry, right from the beginning of winter, uh, they'll feed on a combination of grasses, leaves. They'll start digging for roots. They'll start eating the cambium layer and the bark. They'll dig for bulbs. And then, of course, any of the fruit that we get in winter, the jackalberry fruit. I'm sure they eat the guari fruits too. And those type of things. They were just finished eating the Balanites fruit, the torchwood fruits. This is lovely, and I know we can't really see any others, but it's nice just to watch these two. I don't think it's the same two that we saw a little while back because we're actually quite a distance from where we were, and she seemed to be going in a different direction. And I did a big scan around, and I didn't see any of her and her calf's tracks coming out. She's coming right up to the car now. Hello, girl. Do you mind us? I know it's getting a little bit dark. It's sort of that twilight period now. And I'm sure that the light is playing tricks on your eyes, but you don't have to worry about us. But she hasn't, like I said, she hasn't shown any aggressive signs whatsoever. She's not bothered by us. As long as we don't get in her way of eating and don't upset her little one, she'll probably just ignore us. She, she's feeding around that tree, going to those thicker areas again, back onto the grass. I'm listening to the game drive radio it sounds like they've got some lines it's not on anywhere we can drive but just keeping a, an ear out to make sure if they do start moving in the direction of, of Wuyotela or of Chitwa and we can try and get to that side too are you so little are you tired maybe it's had a very busy day and now it's struggling to keep its eyes open and that's why this is the one's eating so slowly you look like you actually have table manners compared to your mother.
Chitty and Stevie, you say that this is very calming. It is. I always say that when you're in a sighting with elephants, it doesn't matter what has gone on in your life, what traumatic experience you've had. I can promise you right now, the overwhelming sense of peace that you feel around these gentle giants is great. Obviously, if you've, you come across a cow that's in distress and she's not very happy with you, that's not calming. That gets the adrenaline racing. But most of the time, elephants are very peaceful creatures. And especially around here, you know, the guides out in the Sabi Sands are really good. They've had fantastic training and are, well, Troy, try to be as ethical as we can. And we always make sure that the animals come first. And they remember that. Remember, these elephants are only relax like this around cars because they're constantly having good exp and positive experiences with the vehicle. So there's no reason to all of a sudden become aggressive towards us. But as soon as they go to an area where they have bad experiences with people and vehicles, their whole attitude will change. And then you've slowly got to gain their respect and gain their trust. There's not many places where you can go and have sightings like this. I definitely think the elephants and the sabi sands are really great. I, have, I, I can think I can count on my hand sort of the, the not so pleasant experiences I've had with elephants, which is really good for almost six years in the bush. Not bad. And I hope to keep that list very, very short. But it's inevitable. You know, you're bound to get to that point where you come across a herd that's just not particularly happy. You know, there's lots of different things out here that can cause the elephants distress, not necessarily the people. It could be a cow that's an estrus. Maybe she's having complications if she's pregnant. She could, they could be ill. They could be not, like, sort of, you know, upset. Maybe a member of the herd has died or maybe lions caught something. A bull that doesn't want to leave and is harassing the youngsters, that's quite a traumatic experience for the entire herd when they have to push young bulls out. And even just a, a, a bull that is chasing after females, it's looking to mate with them, that's never a fun experience. That's actually when you, you tend to find the cows a little bit upset and you want to make sure that you give them a bit of room because if a bull comes charging in and he's looking um, for an estrus cow, they'll just start moving away and dispersing at all sorts of directions and you don't want to find yourself in the way, but that's not the case over here. Even though she is secreting slightly from her temporal gland, I don't know if you noticed that, just to the right of her eye, uh, they've got these little glands which they secrete a liquid, and, and that just shows you their emotion. It's an overstimulation of adrenaline, but I don't think she seems as though she's stressed. Maybe she's slightly stressed because of the change of season and the quality of food. That could be it but she's not bothered with us at all. Oh, sorry, my hat's popping in. Now, another question from our friend Carsten, and for, who's from Denmark, who's wondering how long are little elephants dependent on their mothers for? Well, for quite a couple of years, in fact, remember the females, uh, any, any female calves will stay with the herd for the rest of their lives. It's the young boys that get pushed out. So they'll stay close and have a good relationship with their mom and their siblings, their female siblings, for the rest of their life. But in terms of suckling, it's about four years or so, three to four years, maybe even slightly longer, um, with, with the drinking milk. And then after that, um, they can live on their own because then they're just feeding on vegetation. Obviously, we just discussed occasionally they'll try and get a sneaky suckle in, um, but not enough that it would make any difference to their health, really. So after that, once they've been weaned, they technically they could live on their own. It's just uh, if they stayed amongst, they'd need to stay within the herd, otherwise they'd find a problem. Um, not a problem, what am I trying to say? I'm distracted, I'm just looking. Here comes a young bull, actually. Look at this, this is what we were just talking about now. Here's some young bulls who look like troublemakers. And so, sorry, Carsten. Um, so theoretically, straight after they've been weaned they're good to go so here's more members one two three four four more elephants coming out of the bushes i think it's the bulls actually five elephants coming out of the bushes now we might see something quite interesting because those two bulls look like they're going to push and shove each other quite around wow the one has actually got very big ivory not the one in front the one coming from the back look at that you'll see you can look very carefully how is that set of ivory 
and they're not particularly old they look like they're about the same age I would put them at about maybe between 15 and 18 years old not quite 20 they're not quite big enough just yet so that one at the back goodness gracious he is going to be a lovely lovely giant one day he's still got a whole lot of growing to do he's probably got about another 20 years of growing at least before he can think about competing with any of the other bigger bulls but I'll tell you he's gonna give a run he's gonna give some other elephants a run for their money he's gonna have lovely ivory look at that that's a great so as you can see it's starting to get a little bit darker now we're gonna have to put the infrared on and we'll see how we go with these elephants so while I do that Ali has left the hyena den I wonder if she's got her spotlight out Ali are you going to find a chameleon before me I think we should have a challenge <laughs> 